Hi, Francois. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm good as well. I'm good as well. I'm excited about today. Um, and this is our last session together um, with this series. So I am yeah, sad on the one hand, but really, really thankful and excited on the other hand. Um, so yeah, episode 10. Um, and uh, I know that you have something special um, in place, but I kind of just want to wrap up what we have discussed over the over the past 10 weeks, um, if that is okay with you. Uh, so we started, well, uh, yeah, quite a while back, we started with what is money. And um, the next episode after that was governance. That one kind of yeah, stretched me like where and how and why is it important. Then we spoke about what is a scroll, um, money and intimacy. That one blew me away because <laughs> I'm still struggling to to marry, you know, the idea that money and intimacy is the same thing. Um, after that, we went into episode five, which was all about trading and understanding the difference between currency, money, and wealth. Uh, then uh, the next one, that was episode six, was how do we see resources? And for me, that one, <laughs> yeah. Most of the times when we spoke about these things, I was just blown away with the new revelation. So thank you just for that. But um, how do we see resources, the difference between seeing finances and resources and that we kind of have to see it in a different way that just blew me away. Then we went into honor. And I think that is where the penny started to drop for me that that community and people is really important when we start, when we, when we speak about money. Um, the next one went into, um, the next one was episode eight. We spoke about community resources. And last week um, you spoke about governing those resources. Uh, so that is kind of a very quick, just recap um, on what happened over the past, over the past nine weeks. Today is episode 10 and we're wrapping this up. Um, but today you wanna to speak about partnership. Uh, because that is kind of the golden thread coming through all of them. Um, tell me, yeah, I'm going to hand over to you. Let's 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 talk about partnership. Why is it important, and how do we partner, and when do we know what, when, and who to partner with? That that is definitely the key question to ask. And so it is. If you just look at all the the topics, um, the the titles of the different episodes, you will see it's all the mechanical parts that make up the relationship. And that's why we use words like intimacy. And that's why we use words like partnership. Uh, and so if you look at how relationships work, if you can't honor someone, you can't see what they are worth. If you don't use the right language and communicate well through governance, you don't have a quality relationship if you don't honor your word and let your yes be your yes and your no be your no then you're not trustworthy there's no integrity and it's also a kind of a contract breaking situation and so partnership it's one of the business principles that most people have got really sad stories or regret or just abuse and so that's what we see marriage all of these things just come down to partnership and it's the foundational principle of creation is relationship partnership and we've spoken about this on molecular level we've spoken about it on scrolls your partnership with father your partnership with creation all of this just comes down to that and so my point being this being the golden thread principles just being the foundational pillars of everything it means if you understand this on a just a basic level but really understand it and understand it in spirit, soul, and body. And so we're going to talk about unity in a bit because that's the partnership principle. If you understand it on just that level and its fullness, then you can build exponentially because your foundation will always be strong enough to take on the higher levels of revelation that comes your way. So it means that from today on, you can walk with Father and land that revelation, what is necessary for you. And so... Let's bring it back to spirit, soul, body, unity. The scripture that says a kingdom divided does not stand. It just basically means a kingdom that is not in agreement. Partnership that is not in agreement does not stand. And so it is very, very important. It is absolutely key to get your partners to be on the same page, to have the same language, if you will, the same frequency, the same agreement principle. 
And so why is this important? Because if your spirit lands a certain revelation, but your soul and body has got a different belief system, there will never ever be agreement. It will always be this tension that you feel inside of you where you feel father stretching you and your body's like, I don't know if I can do this. And you will never manifest anything if that is this, the case. And so what, what do we see in nature? I don't know if we spoke about this, but if you look at male birds and female birds, if you take peacocks, for instance, a peacock comes and he struts his stuff and he shows his tail feathers, but it's all just frequency. It's all just communication. It's all just kind of uh, sending a message and receiving a message type of thing. And so that is a transactional point. So what is happening? The male peacock is communicating to the female, listen, this is who I am. Do you like me? Don't you like me? And so the female peacock will just watch and just look and basically ignore until she gets a message that, yes, this guy's got stamina. Yes, this guy's got the looks. Yes, this guy talks my language. And then she responds. But she does not respond up until the point that she is certain. And so there is a contract being created in that moment. But as soon as she responds, it becomes a yes or a no. And so that brings us back, back to the scripture that says, let your yes be your yes, your no be your no. And a very direct example of this, and this is a thing we need to sort out as sons. Because we think that our word is not that powerful, even though we know that by our tongue, we bring life and death. But an example in the Old Testament, and it is not Old Covenant, New Covenant stuff in the way that it was not, it does not apply today. It still applies today, even though Jesus died for us on the cross. It means that when Isaac gave Jacob the blessing, and Esau came in, even though it was a mistake according to the beliefs of the family and of how uh, blessings should be delivered to the firstborn, Isaac could not take it back. He knew that when he spoke the word, it was done. It was a set deal because your word becomes your signature. It becomes your stamp of approval. And it's the same with our finances. It's the same with our agreements with people and that is the principle of partnership. So we spoke about currency, money, wealth. All of those are situations where you trade. As soon as you transact money, it is actually the last point of the contract. You should have agreed upon what should be in the contract. You should have co-created the contract, the blueprint, the building plans, the business plan, up until the point where you put your signature down. But we don't always do that. We trust the other person is good, is not corrupted. And I'm not saying people are bad, but I'm just saying people are immature. And if you don't really invest yourself in a relationship and bring 100% partnership, you will get conned mostly by yourself because you haven't looked through it. And so you are kingdom divided within yourself, within your signature, within your stamp of approval. And so what, what am I saying? I'm saying that, by the time you've transacted money, you've actually already completed the whole foundation because all you are saying is that I agree with this. That is what your monetary transaction is. That is what your yes and your no is. So partnership actually starts right in the beginning where you start creating, where you start agreeing with what should be framed up into the future. And so it comes down to the scripture that says faith is the substance. That word faith is conviction. Are you convicted for what you will hope for? The word hope means expectation. And the word substance actually transpires to foundation. So are you convinced about the foundation that you will bring, that you will expect at the end of the day as a return on your investment? And so by the time you do the transaction in the shop, You've actually already agreed with the shop owner, even though there was no communication because you take a chocolate or whatever you take off the rack. By the time you get to the cashier, you, you, you've basically decided already. And so where do we see a good example of us bringing good intent to the table? It is Jesus breaking bread. 
Uh, we see it with the 4,000, the 5,000 when he feeds them and it brings multiplication. But it's more than that. It is at the Last Supper where he says, you shall have everlasting life. Now, what happened to bread in the meantime? Bread is still bread. It is not about bread that changed in, in the point from when Jesus was born till the day he was going to get crucified. It's the same with the unclean animals. What we declare unclean and what we declare clean will be just that. And so what are we saying today? I'm saying that if we partner with Father, if we partner with everlasting life and stop partnering with creation as a source of supply, we will start seeing abundance. We will start seeing everlasting life. Because what did Jesus do in that moment? He said, let's break this bread. And he took and he, he gave thanks. It's a moment of affirmation. It's a moment of recognition where he goes, Father, I recognize that you are my source of supply. And we've, we've used the term before, but weaponizing your seed or activating your seed in the moment that you say, Father, I put your covenantal right to me as a son, your energy, your abundance into this bread now. And this bread will become a sign of the fact that I eat of you as a source of supply and not our creation. And so what do we do? We activate the God particle, which is within that bread. And scientists talk about the God particle. It binds everything in the world. And Jesus did the same with the wine. And he said, drink of this. This is my blood. And he activated that within the wine. And so what does the bread represent to us? It represents the flesh, which carries the DNA blueprint. It is that by design, you are agreeing that, Father, I will build with your blueprint, with your, um, with your partnership agreement that we had as spirit beings. And by the blood, I bring an atmosphere of creative energy that sustains that DNA blueprint so that it can have life because the life is within the blood, the, the blueprint is within the flesh DNA. And so we activate those two particles by saying, yes. Father, I come from you as a source of supply. Now your foundation becomes that. So now your conviction is everlasting life. Now your expectation is everlasting life. And so what do you do? You energize from the heavens into the earth. Father's life essence with through your being, your essence, who you are. A triune, um, synchronized unity. And now you are, like Adam, speaking life into creation. And creation for the first time becomes what it was designed to be not your source of supply, but an extension of your partnership with Father as a pleasure, because that is what Eden means. It is a place of pleasure. And so here we are today, and we can say, I take communion with you, Father, Yeshua, Holy Spirit. But if your body has got a different belief system, saying that, yeah, I don't fully agree with that, then your foundation is partly unified because three beings coming together saying that they are doing the same thing but believing different things that's not unity that is just people doing the same thing it is like traffic it doesn't mean everybody that is driving in the same direction as family or have the same beliefs or will go to heaven or any of that all, all it means is that they are heading in the same direction and so you have a combination of individuals and it's what we spoke about with the resource of um of money just getting money and looking at resources differently but if we don't get our body and our soul and our spirit to come into agreement because that is the first principle of partnership we will never ever manifest the fullness of father in this dimension because it will always be fractionally true it will always be fragmented true that is manifested. And so we will always have a sense of hope deferred because we've got three people arcing into the existence, three different things. And that's the same within marriage. And that is the same within business. And that's the same within political parties and nations. If we have individualistic belief systems, then we will always manifest individualistic um, fruit because we are drinking from different sources of supply with different blueprints, with different environments that will bring what you bring. And so that right, is why... Can, can, I, can, I, can I interrupt there? I just kind of want to bring yeah. everything you said now to 
to the place where I understand what you're saying. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, it's like you say, when I go to the shop and I buy bread, even mm. before I pay for that bread, or even before I made the decision which bread I'm going to buy, I have already partnered. I've already made an internal partnership with the shop to buy that bread. Okay, so that is, it has already happened. Money is just the expression. When I give the money at the till, it is just an expression. It is just a final signature that there was a partnership or that, that the partnership has been agreed upon. Um, so in that way, partnerships start way before, is actually formed way before the signature is actually on the contract. And is actually before there's an actual manifestation of what has been decided. So that is what I'm hearing is that partnership starts internal. It's something that needs to be, that starts in our inside. It starts in our mind. It starts in our thoughts. And then it gets expression um, on, a, on a later stage. I think the next thing that I'm hearing you say is like, is Jesus is, is our partnership. Jesus is the key to our partnership with God the Father. He is, he is the key. He is the one that gives us the freedom to have partnership with God in everything. That when I get to buy that bread, I can make a decision. I can make an intentional decision to partner with God in buying the bread. Um, and in that way, I can, the internal decision on which bread, what bread, and make buying that bread from a place of thinking and knowing that I'm buying that bread from a place of wealth and not of poverty has been decided before I get to the toll because I have partnered with Jesus and therefore I have the wisdom of God in that decision. Mm -hmm. And I think the next thing that you said that is really powerful and is kind of blowing my mind is, is, is communion that is, that is bringing heaven and earth together. Communion is, is that key of, of bringing the, 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 the heavens and earth together into that place where we can have an awareness when we when to have an awareness about this partnership and that we're not just living in a place of um yeah we don't really know um wow yeah sorry i interrupted but did i hear you right <laughs> is that what i'm hearing it, it is it is exactly that and so uh Partnership, that's why partnership is the key. Before we, we can manifest anything, there needs to be. It's the scripture that says, there we two or more are gathered in my name, there will be a blessing. And so a blessing is manifestation of resources. That's what we, what other, other than that, we don't have any other reference or um, explanation for blessing. Blessing is not uh, nothing. It is a good feeling. It's a resource. It is inheritance. It's a resource. And we, we read about blessing being um, in the Ten Commandments and it's honoring your father and your mother and it's blessing is to have a long and good life. But that's Sorry, but can, to... I, can I interrupt there? It, it, for me, there's the question now. So when I don't see things manifest, because I think a lot of us sit with, we all hoping for things, but when things are not manifesting either, well, whatever the reason might be, but could the core of that be is that the partnership isn't healthy? The partnership isn't, the partnership that started inside of me is is not healthy is not mature is not from the right resource or from the right source and therefore i don't see the manifestation of that 100 percent. it is it's again the scripture if if we expect something different than what we are convinced of that is a problem for the in between the substance the foundation and so if if we and so conviction is your belief system and so that's why we, when I talk to people, I put them in situations, I ask certain questions to unlock their secret beliefs. That's why I always tell people creation, which we are part of, has been designed to go through hardships because hardships reveal your hidden beliefs. If, if for extreme example, if I take a gun and I put it against your head and you can't face every day, noon and night, that you are above everything of this earth. We will quickly find out if you are scared of death. Because that is that moment. It really tastes. And you might, in a percentage of your being, believe that. But if you don't believe that 100%, 1% is enough to kill you. And so that bullet will strike that 1% of your being 
and it will destroy that 1%. You might survive, but it will still cause devastation and that might cause hope deferred. And that's where hope deferred comes in if our belief system does not align with our expectation or our hope. And that's why we need to dig into these things. That's, that is why it's so important to have the conversations that we, we are having and, and discuss the topics that we are discussing because secretly we are saying, listen, these are the foundational principles and you need to check your body, you need to check your soul, that it is in alignment with these spirit principles. And you need to allow Holy Spirit to check this in you so that you, you can be revealed in the fullness of it because it doesn't help trying to build a 100-story skyscraper, but you've got a foundational plan for a one-story house. You will crash that foundation and your whole building will come tumbling down, which is another situation for hope deferred. It just happens in different spaces of time and so everything we don't see manifest according to what father shows us just reveals that our foundation is not sorted out and it's not a bad thing i always tell people it it is never a crisis it's always an opportunity to learn it's always an opportunity for for growth for maturity and so we must always see these tough situations in our lives as a revealing moment as being in the cooking pot and taking off all the impurities from the world so you can reflect the image of Father with more clarity. And so that's why we, we say these practically, it is just relationship. It's just partnership. And so in your heart, what the heart thinks of, meditates on, will be the manifestation of who you are. But if you've got heartache, you feel it in your body. If you've got heartache, you feel it in your emotions. It, your heart is the window to from the heavens into this dimension. And that's the tension. And so I think it's important that you understand in your body, there will be tensions and it will manifest in certain ways. That's body language. Start listening to your body in that regard. If you have um, smells, tastes, sounds, sights, all of the five senses and some, Start recognizing that as body language until you learn the language of your body in such a way that your body feels like you are actually getting me. We are actually good partners now because you're listening. Because that is what it is. It's the same with Father's voice. And so do the same with your soul. Start listening to those emotional triggers, those moments, those be sensitive. Take some time, sit down and listen to yourself. And so you are three parts. You might as well listen to three different voices so that they come into unison because as soon as you become a good partner, a good husband or a good wife within communion, within intimacy with all of those, your the result of unconditional love, sitting, being present, all of that creates unconditional trust. And unconditional trust creates unity. And what we call rest, is just another word for unity because if you are not in unity with yourself, you are not in rest because your body is pulling in a different direction than the rest of your being. And so it is about really watching those moments. It's key highlighted moments for you to take note. And that's why being present is so important. That's why intimacy, once again, it's intimacy principle. You sit down, you take a moment, you stop and you check yourself. You have a conversation and you just sit down, what is happening now between, because you are in partnership. If, you're, if you liquidate your business principle as a spirit soul body, you are dead. It's end of, end of contract, end of business end. And so you might as well sit down and have a business meeting with yourself and say, listen, where are we not in agreement with ourselves? Why is this wrong? What is going on? Why am I not healthy? Because if father is healthy, why am I not healthy? Why? Let's yeah. stop being so religious and so, uh, what is the word? So I'm going to put holy in brackets now because we put ourselves in this holiness thing that we can't even question that. We question is the door to Father's heart. So ask questions about everything. Father, if I am holy and you are holy, you live within me, why am I still sick? Why am I still not healthy in, in my emotions? Why do I still feel traumas? Why can't I deal with these things? And it's because we are not allowing healthy partnership. Because if you do healthy partnership through unconditional love, which means that you sit down and you talk through stuff, you throw your religion out of the door, 
that means you create unconditional trust which means your body and soul is actually in unity with who you are because they function in the format that they were created to function and not outside of that. And it allows unconditional trust for Father to flow into every nook and cranny of who you are. Because if you don't trust, you block. You, you are offended. Offense, take offense, it's to block. And so if Father comes in and you are not in unity with him, you block him and he can't heal you. Because his healing energy can't come within your space because you don't trust it. Because you haven't cultivated the flow of true intimacy, which is unconditional love. And so that is what partnership is. We don't see electrons fighting with one another in a natural environment. But if we shoot a neutron within to the core of a nucleus, we see a fission reaction and we see basically an atomic bomb. And so that is problematic situation that is this unity until all that energy dissipates and we see but what is the result after that it's still death and so we need to realize that that is how we function normally we we are our, our own biggest enemies and so we need to sit down to just have a good conversation and get to rest so it feels it it yeah, it, it, it feels like what we have spoken about over the past 10 weeks, it it is really, I think our focus was money all along, um, you know, and it was how do we think about, how do we think about money? And yeah, like I've said so many times, I walked away from our conversations and I was like, whoa, I didn't realize this and that. But it feels to me like these principles is deeper than just money. It feels like these these principles can can flow into every part of our lives how do we take that forward how do we dig deeper how do i yeah i think i think my question is what's next um you know how do we how do we take this into the next step into the next level of our lives so let's just talk about um how this connects to everything say you're on business now you need to choose a partner and this is now something I'm also um, the, one of the guys that are, uh, what, what's the word, um, guilty. I'm also <laughs> guilty of sometimes uh, wanting to partner with people. Now, remember, partnership is very quick. It's like just buying something in a shop. Um, but don't take it too far now. So let me get back to what I want to say. So if we are driving in traffic and everybody's going in the same direction, it doesn't mean I need to partner with everybody that's just moving in the same direction because they can have completely different foundations, belief systems, everything like that. So a lot of the time we find people with a similar calling or blueprint than us, and then we just immediately want to partner. We are desperate for a partner that gets us. And so we walk into that euphoric kind of situation and we actually are just chemically in love, but we can't sustain a marriage for long term. And that's with business, that's with marriage, that's with anything where you come into agreement where you have to deal with someone. And so if we do that with business, I need to check, okay, Father, is this person called to partner with me through you for what we are doing? Do Is their foundation on a similar level than mine? Because if my baby girl is two years old, and I want to partner with her on the level that we are talking now, I'm an idiot, plain and simply. That is just folly. That is just, that is not wisdom because she's got no capacity to function on the level that we need to. Even though she might be a great human being with a great calling and everybody can see that, it doesn't mean she is mature enough to sustain the environment. It will cause devastation for both of us as a partner, but it might destroy her as a person. And so partnership is governance. Even before you even sign a contract, you need to see, will this benefit this person? It's like in Romans 14, where it talks about if you eat food that will cause somebody else to stumble, that is a problem. You are causing offense in their lives, which causes them to trip up in a way that destroys their relationship with father and in their own lives. And so you need to govern even that space. Because you govern the realm around you. You are partnering with time and energy around you. You are partnering with the molecules and the electrons and everything that floats around you, which we call atmosphere, oxygen, all of this. 
you are partnering with and you need to govern that from that place. And so it is a massive responsibility to be a son. You are not on this earth by chance. You've got the capacity, but it means taking it slow, taking it from rest, not rushing into partnership. Because if we rush into partnership, we destroy, we bring chaos, we build not sustainably, not for the next generation. And so understanding that, we take this into marriage. How are you called to be married? Marriage is a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege. It is your agreement with father, another person's agreement with father coming together. So it means that there is synchronized union in the heavens, therefore on the earth. Not because you've got a type, not because that person's got money. That is not a good foundational principle to sustain the highest level of government in this earth, which brings forth life. Your source of supply for partnering with somebody needs to come from Father. If it's going to be money or resources, then you are feasting on them and to sustain your partnership or relationship or your intimacy based on what they have. It's, if it's their looks, your partnership is doomed to fade away as soon as looks go out the window. If it's money and that person loses the money, your partnership goes out the window. And so that is business. Um, everything, everything you can take on the earth. If you want to start manifesting things, Father's giving you a dream, you need to understand this principle. So it is the foundational truth for everything that we do as humans. And so if you sit down and you take what we've discussed and you just look closely, the relationship wine has with a wine glass comes down to intimacy and relationship because they have decided to flow within that space in a way that Father has ordained and that we have framed up. And so you know what you, you need to know to be a son. And so what is the next step? This is not necessarily so straightforward for most people. Uh, it is an, an intimate journey I've had with Father for a very long time. And for me, it comes very naturally. And I see it in everything play out all day. But some people need a, a little bit more practical help. Other people are going to just take this and run with Father. And they're going to be fine. And so that's where we come in and say, listen, we've given you everything that you need to be um, walking into maturity. But if you need extra help, if you need extra support, if you just need us to frame it up in a different way that is more chewable, like they say, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. This is what we do. This is, this is our gift, um, is to mechanically apply it within your unique environment because you are unique, because you are created very special. Like we said, every part of the community needs to be revealed, honored, and celebrated for the rest of the body to to reveal itself. And this is where we do then coaching sessions where we say, okay, let's take what you know now in principle and let's help you apply it so that at least your spirit, soul, and body comes into uni unity. What does your body believe? And then we take practical tools and we take you through it and we just say, let's unlock what you believe. And so there are various ways to do it. And we do the same with your soul. And then we start bringing you into unity. And it's not forever because even like Jesus said, I can show you what the father does. We say the same thing. We just help you to bridge the gap between you and father until it's so strong and mature that every part of your spirit, soul, body hears father's voice with clarity because that's our biggest problem most of the time. We don't hear father's voice with unity. And so there's that tension. And so it is for a season. We don't make disciples of ourselves. We, we help sons step into the inheritance, restore the inheritance into relationship, intimacy with Father. And then you go. And then responsibilities on you to multiply and replicate that within your community. And so that's all we do. So we make our time available beyond this. We've given you foundational pillars. Right. But if you struggle, if you have questions, if you want somebody to just journey with you on this until you feel safe, until you feel comfortable, until you don't feel the tension anymore, um, where you can't handle it by yourself, because believe me, you will always feel tension because we are always growing. But that's why we are here. That's why we are doing this. That's why we are saying, listen, put up your hand, say, let's talk. 
Let's do a meeting uh, because this is our heart. This is our passion. Amen. Yeah, I would like to extend Francois' invitation to anybody who might be listening to this. If you need help, if you need any, any further conversations or going deeper into this, our details is available in the subscribe button or in the description below. Reach out. We would love to connect with you, myself or Francois, and we can take the conversation from there. So please reach out. Um, yeah, we would love to hear from you. Francois, this has been an incredible, incredible, incredible journey. Um, yeah, if I can, just the growth that I have experienced in the past 10 weeks was immeasurable. Um, I'm learning every day. Thank you for the, thank you for the deposit into my life. And I am excited to, like you said, take it to my community and help the people around me um, with this knowledge that you have shared with me. So thank you. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, many, 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 many blessings for you um, and may everything that you touch and everything that you see and everything that you speak may it grow and just have the blessing of God upon it. I appreciate that. No, it's absolute pleasure and honor to do this. It is, I can tell you, I can feel the life of Father flow through this. Uh, yes, it is I mean, by no means just uh, uh, what people would call uh, a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. So if you are listening to this, it's not a coincidence. Take this. This is good seed. Weaponize this seed with Father's God particle. Activate everything you do. Everything you do. When you walk, activate the God particle within your life. And just let it flow. Because if you become that conduit, you also become that river. You also become that ocean of Father's goodness in people's lives. So yeah, it is a blessing and an honor to journey with you guys on this. And Amazing. yeah, let's do some more of this in the future. We will. We will. Thank you, Francois. Bless you. Bye. Bye. Bye.